this was at its core an argument for a defensive player to be MVP like a Micah Parsons, why is it always the quarterback of one of the best two teams, the one seeds in either conference? Well, it just is. But he said what he said about Jalen Hurts, and it it lit the fuse, and it created a buzz, and now he understands. And why can't you do it? Because you play against those teams. You have games coming up. You have a Christmas Eve game in Dallas against the Eagles. And it becomes fodder to get players and teams motivated, even though they'll say we don't listen to it, Peter. We know by now that they do. So it's better to not have that stuff out there that can be used against you for just a little extra drive, extra motivation, extra focus, extra something. It reminds me, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, of Anthony Brown. Remember him? The safety for the Steelers, oh, yeah. talking big in 2007 about how they're going to hand the Patriots their first loss of the year. And Tom Brady says, I don't listen to that. And the Patriots say, we don't listen to that. And the minute Tom Brady throws a touchdown pass over Anthony Brown, what does he do? He runs up and gets in his face during that game. <laughs> hey, look, you know, Mike, I think when you actually listen to the words that Micah Parsons spoke, um, you know, that's when you hear what I thought was his intent in this. And it wasn't terrible, but you could tell. It reminded me of the old statement when Jerry Jones said to uh, Rick Gosselin and Ed Werder, uh, you know, that 500 guys could coach the Dallas Cowboys. You know, that he was just, I don't want to say dismissive, but he 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 was talking about Jimmy Johnson like he's not really that special. And when I heard the voice of Micah Parsons talking about Jalen Hurts, you know, his his tone was again, it was not dismissive. All respect to Jalen Hurts, but you know, his the tone was a lot of quarterbacks can be doing what he's doing. And so that is where the trouble comes in. You know, if you can actually hear his words and and not just read his 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 words on a piece of paper, but to kind of hear his tone. And that's where I think he gets in a little bit of trouble here. And why, if I was Jalen Hurts, I would say, huh, we'll see on Christmas Eve. We'll see what happens. And, you know, we will see what happens. It now becomes like, I, I just feel sorry for all the Christian families of America quite honestly, because who, who don't love football, because basically they're going to have somebody in their, in, in their house who said, Hey, can we have Christmas Eve dinner at eight o'clock tonight? If you're in the Eastern time zone, or maybe seven o'clock, if we're in the central time zone, because I got to watch this game, this all of a sudden now that just adds uh, fuel to the fire, and that becomes even a more of a of a must see game. You know, it is funny. There was a time where it felt like the NFL tiptoed around Christmas a little bit, and it's doing <laughs> less and less tiptoeing around. Now it's got they got the clod hoppers on for Christmas <laughs> Eve and Christmas Day, right? I mean, you got yeah. Steelers Raiders on Christmas Eve. Are you kidding me? And three games on Christmas Day for the first time, but. Uh, yeah, celebrate on Boxing Day, the 26th yeah, of right. December, and uh, leave football to the two main days for the holiday. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.